it's Memorial Day weekend and we are off on another road trip uh, in Washington State. And it's our birthday. Yeah, it's your birthday today. My birthday was yesterday. So it's our birthday weekend adventure. Uh, well, we are currently on Highway 2 Washington State, which is on the scenic loop in Washington. One of our favorite things to do here is to do road trips on this loop. And after we get off this road, we're going towards a place called Wintrow. And we also have a new mission. So we are working on a tourism video um, just of scenic beauty shots from around the state. And so this will be really fun because this is an area of Washington I've never been to and not a lot of Seattle people go to because it's a little bit further away. We rented some 100 to 400 zoom lenses. I got the Fujifilm. And I got the Sony, so we'll do a little bit of gear comparison. Um, and so it'll be another uh, show that involves both travel and photography and gear. And Hope you enjoy it. This is the second update from our birthday road trip and this one is not so positive. So we were driving uh, from Seattle out to Winthrop and Twist, Washington and along the way we hit a deer. Yeah, it was pretty unfortunate and it happened really fast. It ran in front of the car in um, almost dark and I pressed the brake but I wouldn't stop in time. It was not possible. So we got off pretty lucky and we don't have injuries. Uh, the deer was not so lucky. And our car got us here to the hotel, so we're not stranded. Uh, but it doesn't have the chance to run for a long distance. Yeah, so our uh, next course of action, we just got off the phone with our insurance company. So insurance is sending out a tow truck. We're going to have to be towed to the nearest city, which is about an hour away, and pick up our rental and then uh, start to get the car repaired. But we're not even sure how long it's going to take, take to get the repair. So this is going to be quite an interesting uh, journey from here on out. But at least we can continue the weekend. Yeah, logistically, it's a headache, but we have options. And we're in a very nice place, actually, mm -hmm. right next to the it's river. Full of deer. This is actually yeah. really like it's not unusual to hit a deer. We took it into the mechanic here and he was like, you know, that happens all the time. The bartender told us his car is still wrecked from it. So it happens to everybody here. Um, unfortunately, mm -hmm. we didn't know. We, but anyway, yeah. we, we couldn't have done much. Mm -hmm. uh, either way, right now our car looks like this. And it's pretty smashed. So right now we're waiting for the tow truck. I'm going to hop into it, go an hour away to an actual city and look for a car rental while Susie is going to enjoy the resort here by the river. <laughs> and this is our hotel here, log cabin style. And in this sense, maybe it's, you know, a little fortunate for us that we came in a day early because it is a holiday weekend. And so, you know, today's Friday, so hopefully we can get this started get our rental and maybe get at least a couple days more out here. We're hoping to be able to do our activities with a rental car. It seems like we have a path to that. But we came here for wildlife, photographing birds, and we ran into wild, wildlife much quicker than that immediately yes. as we entered the mm -hmm. stretch here, and it was a pretty big surprise. Well, the tow truck actually got here quite quickly, so... But in the process, we found out we were given the wrong room by accident, so we ended up having to pack up our stuff and move next door to the other room. So this has been quite the adventure so far. So yeah, the help came very quickly. The, these people are very prompt and the car is already connected.
Hey, what's up YouTube? This is Susie with Gemini Connect and today I am here with the Moza Mini S smartphone gimbal. I'm almost at the end of the journey to Wenatchee. An hour and a half so far when we're approaching it. And we're stopped here at a gas station. It's gonna be close to two hours. Today the plan was to go photographing and videotaping birds, but instead this is what I'm doing right here. deal with these guys, Abra Auto Body and Glass. We ran into a deer. We weren't moving very fast, but it still caused damage. Um, we took it to a car repair shop and he told us it smashed and the belt is okay. running really close to the, yeah, that's stuck. So the belt is running really close to the hose for the coolant. Yeah, and so he said it's not safe to get back to Seattle. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, definitely not. I know, right? Evidence. <laughs> Evidence, yes. I'm not making this up. Yeah. And some, it spew grass yeah. on the glass there. Yeah. All right. I have another car, a Nissan Sentra 2019. So I can begin the journey back for another two hours up the same road we came when we hit the deer. So... I think uh, I'll be fine, but I'll be looking out extra hard for deer this time, especially as I get into the Metho Valley. Everybody I talk to here keeps telling me how frequently this happens, and I keep on seeing smashed cars getting towed around, so something to know about, I guess. I, I think we'll be fine. And we'll be dropping this car off in Seattle. Our car is going to remain in Wenatchee until it is fixed. They're going to quote us something by the end of the day over email. And I'm going back into the mountains in the in remote place where this whole saga began. Interesting birthday weekend I'm having so far, but you know what? Um, things do happen, and in the end of the day, it's an adventure. It's um, you take your chances when you go places. So let's go through this. So this is the Moment Anamorphic Lens. It's the newest Moment Lens that I picked up recently. I'm driving back. It's gonna be a long two hours by myself here, but I'm um, listening to classic rock and I'm driving through the desert by the Columbia River in Eastern Washington. This whole trip's destination was a very remote region of our state to begin with and now I'm having to cover the last half of it for the third time in a day and a half. So that's kind of funny, but um, it's, it's all right, you know, it, it is what it is. And it's really pretty. I've always loved this drive, so I don't mind doing it that many times in such a short distance. But what I really want to do is get back to where we were in Winthrop and get to the wildlife videography that we came to do. And that way... We are only set, set back about half a day. Um, and it's sort of rainy. It's, we can do things in this day, but um, it's not a huge loss. And honestly, in the grand scheme of things, of how many trips we've done and how many things have worked out on tight schedules and everything, a half a day of setback and something like $1,500 for deductibles and rentals is not the worst. So yeah. I think we'll pull this one off. Stopping at a really nice fruit stand. I'm hoping they have a coffee, honestly. I've only had a really watery coffee in the morning. And I've been running on a bagel, but I want to eat later with Susie. So um, I'm going to just look for a coffee. Uh, I always like this fruit stand. It's very nicely done with these flowers. And here we'll see what we have. Hey, going well. Do you guys have coffee here? No. Do you know who has coffee? Nobody around here. Hmm. I guess. Got the Starbucks coffees. That is cool. All right, I'll get some of that. 
And this will have to do the Frappuccino in a bottle. I'll get vanilla, sweeten my day a bit, since it's going a little out of the ordinary. Back in Winthrop, new car. Let's see what Susie thinks about the new ride. She's been working here all morning, and now it's time to go adventure. We have a new car. Are you ready to adventure? Yes. Yeah. The journey continues. We have a rental car. We're in the Okanagan forest. We're in the forest looking for wildlife, and of course, the first one we saw was a deer. <laughs> Susie is not amused. So, I do have the Moza Mini S, and we're doing some gimbal shots with it. Nice forest, but as soon as we stop to look for some bird or something, we get swarmed by mosquitoes right now. So we can't actually stop to do anything. We ran out of battery on the wireless go and we put the Fujifilm shotgun mic here because it's windy. Pretty cute, looks good. We came up all the way to the top of the mountain because um, there were too many mosquitoes lower where it was, it was forested and we got swarmed. So we made it up to Sun Mountain Lodge, which gives you a 360 of this area. It's fantastic. And that is actually a good tip for when you're looking for like landscape beauty shots is look for the lodges because they tend to have like the best views. That's true for like Suncadia and uh, the Hood Scamania. Canal, like Alderbrook, Scamania, yeah. like there, a lot of our lodges here are, have the best real estate and you can come up and you know don't abuse the privilege but come and uh, shoot from some of their views and just get some amazing shots. <laughs> you give an icon bag, an icon lens cap, and a Sony lens. Sony 100 to 400, 4.5 to 5.6. This thing feels brand new. It's like so nice and actually really compact considering it is a 400. Whoa, that's cool. Yeah, that's super cool. This is like a different kind of shooting. You're like spying on nature. Jeez, the DJ on that tree. Yeah. That's really out there? Yeah. Jeez. <laughs> yeah. We managed to get a pretty good half a day of shootings anyway today. We actually did. Yes. So, uh, yeah, there's some bridges here and a river and it's actually right now, the sun is breaking through the clouds, so I think we're gonna luck out. The Fuji is getting way more color than the GoPro. The Fuji is? Yeah. Probably than mine too. Yeah, it is. And it's alright. It's not bad. But I am shooting also in raw. Are you shooting in raw? Mm -hmm. Should be shooting in raw. I think I'm raw and JPEG, yeah. whatever. Maybe. Max. Yeah. Station. Yeah, I have that shot too. Yeah. Well, good, because we got to compare. <laughs> That's right. Even the 
the sun just set over the mountains and we're on a really good footbridge here in Winthrop it's a really really well made footbridge serious construction We're at a place called Perry Gin Park and we're trying to do some bird shots but we hear them singing all around and when I look into these trees where they are they're really hard to spot because they're very little and even when I see them they're hiding behind the leaves and I can't take a shot of them so far but you can hear them, they're everywhere and Susie is out there in the distance far and she's mounted the um, Sonia on a tripod shooting in the distance, so I wonder if she's seeing something. We'll check on her in a bit. I suck so bad at this. This is actually really hard. <laughs> yeah. So far I have a duck and a robin. <laughs> well, I got nothing. So. <laughs> I got scenery. Oh, there's a little one. The, Dude, the little ones are like harder. They fly I've too been fast, to yeah. Do the swifts. Yeah, it's the very hard to track them. Yes, I can't with this long lens. And no, if yeah, this long lens is actually hard. It's like, there's an art to just using a long lens. There's a bunch. It's fucking fast though. They're fast <laughs> and they're small. Yes. It's actually very difficult. I, there are a bunch in those trees and they're uh -huh. singing, but they're so small I cannot see them. And when I saw one, mm -hmm. it keeps hiding in the leaves and I can't focus. So who realistically wants to be a National Geographic photographer? Because you know that this is what's involved. <laughs> <laughs> you stay in location I for mean, days. You better really be into birds or whatever it is that you're tracking. <laughs> Finally got to take some proper bird shots. We found birds! So I guess the tip with birds is that if you're in like a more open lake where we saw a lot of fishermen, you can see birds there but then they're not as concentrated as in like, I don't know what this is called exactly, like a it's marsh. like a marsh, yeah. Yeah, so you have more reeds, uh, the water's more still, and um, it's just easier to find birds. Yeah. So we each have the 100 to 400, 4.5 to 5.6 lens. Uh, Fujifilm makes one as well as Sony. So we figured just because we both have two different kinds of cameras and they're almost exactly the same lens, we would just uh, each get the lens. I have the Sony a7R 3 Martin has the X-H1, and we rented them from our local camera company. They were at the same price, had them for the same amount of time, and so we're using them mostly for birding, also with monopods. Yeah, with these big lenses, you really need the monopod, and the one I'm using has feet and I'm hit by Manfrotto, which yeah. is good stuff. So I've been into monopods for a while because I've been using long lenses for a long time. So I have this one by Oben. It's a carbon fiber. I really like it because of how compact it is. And for me and my height, this works out really well. But the issue with it is that I couldn't put feet at the bottom. So I ended up having to get a second monopod. So this is a monopod from Three-Legged Thing. Uh, it's actually among the tallest monopods when it's fully extended and uh, it's magnesium alloy, it's not carbon fiber, but that's okay because again, you sometimes need the extra steadiness. But the real selling point is the fact that it has these feet at the bottom. And so even though you may not want to really fully suspend your camera, you don't want to treat it like a tripod, but when you're using it 
as a monopod, it just helps give you some extra stability. And it has a Manfrotto um, video head on top, but you can switch that out and put any tripod head that you want. This head is great though, I was just shooting with it and it's really, really good. Yeah, and even this one, I have the Mi Photo like uh, ball head on the top, so I always interchange my ball heads or my video heads. But yeah, we're testing out these two monopods and our lenses and cameras and trying to get some birding shots. All right, on to the next location. a pretty cool location with a lot of these ducks which have blue bills and we're going to identify later. Where we are now is kind of a high ground overlooking the Metho Valley. And it's not jagged mountains, it's um, rolling hills and many flowers and bushes on them that smell really good. And we're just looking for wildlife going above everything else here. So far we've seen a lot of ducks. Well, and the thing too with, I think, wildlife... Sorry, I'm shooting b-roll so I can show you what, what we're looking at. Um, is that you, if you... You know, even a common duck... I just saw a chipmunk. Because I'm like, I honestly have never photographed a chipmunk. Like, I've looked at them a lot, but have you ever taken a photo or a video of a chipmunk? <laughs> or a duck, for that matter? So I think, yeah, it's something like nature, and you're just starting out. Like, even things that seem basic to you, like, shoot them if you haven't done it before. Yeah, and especially with video, you can get their behaviors on yeah. camera. Uh -huh. Which, um, normally, they happen so fast that you don't really know what they're doing, but later you can rewatch it and realize they have many complex behaviors that... Even though it's just a chipmunk, it actually does many things. Yeah, it gives you like a new appreciation for animals, I think. Because even, yeah, these ducks. Like, I've seen ducks before, but I've never seen them doing that behavior we just saw them doing. Yeah, not <laughs> these kind of ducks either. Yeah. Now we have to get out because it's starting to rain. Yep, yeah, it looks like it. It's yeah. Right. <laughs> we are in a part of Washington that neither of us has ever been to before. In 17 years in this state, I never made it this far. We just passed the town of Bridgeport and we crossed over back into Okanogan County next to a dam which name I didn't catch. Chief Joseph? Chief dam? Joseph Dam, I yeah. Think. Yeah, and we're basically running away from uh, Twisp and Winthrop because it's pouring down rain. So it's a good strategy to just, at least in Washington, to head east and eventually you'll escape the rain <laughs> and get to somewhere that's not raining. Yeah, I'm going around carrying a massive monopod and massive lens looking for birds, <laughs> even his legs. Hawk maybe. Hawk out in... Oh. Yeah, right there. See him. Wow, okay. There's a big bird hovering. This area is crazy because it just rained so much and now it's, it feels just like you're drinking sage tea. like this giant uh, lens which basically requires us to use a monopod to keep it stable but the problem with this is that sometimes you're shooting up close you want to get that 100 to 400 range then you might want to be able to get like a big wide pan and so it's not very fast or economical to try to change your lens so the best thing to do is to kind of switch your camera over here keep it steady and have your mid-range or your wide angle on a secondary body and this is actually how I shoot concerts because concerts now nowadays you usually have to shoot from the soundboard which means you have to have a lens like this but sometimes you want those wide environmental shots. So you flip back and forth between the two and cover a wide range of shots. And I don't have a second camera with me so I can't shoot wide angle. <laughs> Go 
what people associate Washington State is Seattle and the coast and the evergreen forests around the coast but the truth is that the vaster part of the state is actually this type of terrain where it's just sagebrush and grass and huge open land This is the Grand Coulee Dam, the biggest in Washington State and I think the Northwest. It's our first time to it and it's pretty impressive. It's really cool. There's like no one else here. <laughs> yeah. We've basically set up shop here at the Vista over the Grand Coulee Dam and we're playing with all kinds of stuff. Our gear bags, Osmo Pocket doing a motion time lapse. What I'm about to do is, I'm gonna play with my Zeiss lens on my XH1. This is by far the biggest river in the Northwest. Going for something like 2,000 miles from Canada all the way to the Pacific Ocean, through Washington State and Oregon. Very cool vista here. First time in Okanagan. Yeah, I've never been in Okanagan. I've always wanted to come here. It goes all the way into Canada. It's like a fertile valley with a lot of agriculture. And we're looking for breakfast. So really the only place around here is this place called Smallwood Farms. And it looks like it's a grocery store also with some food. So we're gonna go see what we can get for breakfast. <laughs> We have a lot of local stuff, so if you've ever seen this brand, Liberty Orchards, they have these apples and cutlets, and all kinds of like fruit chews. They're all based out in Cashmere, Washington, which is out by Leavenworth. Biscuits and gravy here, and this salad looks very much of what you would get in Bulgaria, actually. It actually really does. It's like a chef's salad almost. Yeah, and this is Susie's breakfast store. I bought my small wood farms cat and the reason I felt compelled to do that is because I grew up in such a region where there's a city in the middle and all around it are orchards and vineyard fields so I like I have a soft spot for orchards and vineyards areas and that's what this cat is about and the second reason is I really like what they're doing here which is um, they have the farms in the back and then they have a shop and the shop is full of what they make in the farm like all the sauces and all types of things they make themselves and then on top of that, they also have the restaurant. So all the concept fuels into itself. Each business can support the other businesses. And that way they are more resilient um, to economic downturns. We went to explore a new national forest we never saw before called Coco Nali. And unfortunately it's raining really hard, but we're going at it by car. And we swerved over to another big park and then the road turned into dirt and rocks have fallen. This is how we're doing our wildlife photography because it's been it's raining. Wet. It's been raining all morning and we're in a very gorgeous area. So we're, tr Ducks. we're trying to get the most of it. We just stumbled upon an interesting place called Loop Loop. 
It's cold. <laughs> <laughs> and we thought it was going to be totally empty because it's a ski bowl and his chair lifts and everything. But it's actually packed with people camping and shooting bow and arrow. And then there's this really cool truck that's been turned into a building. <laughs> So there's like a military bus of some sort, <laughs> it's buried into the ground. We are at yet another horse event, but this one's in America. Yes, we are at the Mito Valley Rodeo in Winthrop, Washington. It's a little wet. Yeah. <laughs> you might be a little over prepared, but that's okay. So, so I'm dressed like a total perv. <laughs> with the <laughs> raincoat and rain pants. Ooh, the oh, the bull is the bull is here. We've been dealing with rain all day, but this was the fun event we discovered is happening the same weekend we're here. So. in the wilderness around Winthrop, Washington and um, the cool thing about Winthrop is there's a massive network of these dirt roads and other trails that you can do any type of activity on and all this huge wilderness is accessible to many kinds of activities. It doesn't feel super crowded, no. uh, which is a good feeling because you can get out, kind of do your own thing, it feels like it's yours. Made it to our destination far up in the mountains and it's looking pretty good. It's called Pipestone Canyon. Have to find more ruddy ducks. <laughs> no. Maybe your grouse or a quail. Cool terrain here. It's not too difficult. The goal is not to go all the way through here. The goal is to find a place with wildlife and take some shots. There are definitely a lot of birds around us and there's a nest right here. So I want to peek and see if there's anything in it. No, there is nothing in it. We hear birds all over, but we have seen none because there must be very well hidden and pretty small. So we're going to go off trail in this direction a little bit. And we're going to try to find them. We hear a bunch there.
you're doing is behind the scenes at Blue Star Coffee. Um, we're roasting today. So we roast um, wholesale customers right around here in the Metal Valley, regionally, and um, oh boy, west side and some far flung places too. So this is, I guess, our roasting plant. So we've got our, you're looking at a lot of green coffee. Boom. This is our decaffeinated coffee. We do a water processed decaffeinated coffee. We call it the best decaf in the world. It's more the, uh, the technology's gotten really good. So you can take really nice coffee, you can decaffeinate it using only water instead of solvents and get a great tasting decaf out the other side. Just arrived at Washington Pass, the coolest, most impressive mountain pass in Washington State. And we're about to show you some eye candy. Even though the light is the worst possible light of the day, just our timing is such, we'll see what we can do. Sometimes you just do what you gotta do. And here we go. Washington Pass. It is a bit vertigo inducing. The road goes down there and climbs all the way up here where we're standing. Mm -hmm. 